For more resources, visit rymonline.org. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, We're talking to Dr. Ed Welch all this week. Uh, Today, something we often ask youth workers uh, is a truth that they cling to uh, for perspective and encouragement in in ministry. And so uh, in a similar vein, uh, what are some biblical truths that give you encouragement uh, when counseling someone? Well, I'll give you the the one that has been sort of of rambling around my own heart for, I would say, a little while now, a little while being the last six months. Uh, and, And it's this, that as we follow the storyline of Scripture, the you know, and even even starting in Genesis itself, the the purposes of God are that He would be close to us as His people. That's that's His intent that that we would be with Him, we would live Him. And obviously, that's the nature of the Garden, and the, the our, our tendency is to keep turning the opposite direction. But, but to recognize that this is the very character of God, that he closer, he invites us closer, 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 that intimacy, fellowship, communion, friendship, uh, uh, even, even identified in, in marital terms is the scripture it picks up momentum to, for, to understand that that is God's heart, that he would be with us. And we would be with him. And and let me let me uh, just throw a couple other words in there that have been helpful for me. And not all of them are original to me at all. But but the, the, that he would be with us, and we would be with him in his very house, where we enjoy his hospitality. And the scripture oftentimes put it puts it in terms of a banquet, mm-hmm. and and enjoy him forever. Psalm twenty three, one of our favorite psalms. That's you know, it, it, it all all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the the psalm comes a little bit more lively. Where, you know, Psalm twenty three, it's it, it's life is a kind of journey, and and there there are easier times to the journey, and sometimes they're just plain arduous times mm-hmm. to the journey. Mm-hmm. But the journey is is headed toward the very house of God. That is that is God's intent with us, that we would be close to Him. So, so for me, what, th- what does that mean? That's God's inclination. His inclination is not to turn away. His inclination, is, you know, I'm the one who turns away. His inclination is closer, come closer, come closer, come closer, touch me. Uh, um, and, and then from there, from that starting point, uh, and I think this is, this is important for, for certainly me, as I think of myself as a teenager, uh, but but me, as I, as I think about myself now, that the scripture does call us to obedience. And, and obedience, it, it, yeah, it seems like you're obeying a law. It seems very impersonal. But, but when, it's, when it's cast in, in these highly ra- relational terms, what it's saying is obedience serves the purpose of the relationship. That's why we obey. That... that um, uh, I, I, I tend to think of these things in marital terms, where my wife and I, we have different laws that we abide by in our marriage, um, and the laws increase fairly often. Uh, it, it, this might seem silly, but we wear seatbelts, and everybody wears seatbelts. It's a law. But when we started, when we were first married, they didn't even have seatbelts, and then they started having seatbelts, and you didn't have to wear them. At some point early on. I saw that my wife wasn't wearing a seatbelt, and I said, "You make I, you promise me that you, for the rest of your life you will always wear that seatbelt. You swear to me." And she said, "All right, I'll swear to you. You have to you have to swear that to me as well." So, so ever since, every single time I get in the car, I buckle my seatbelt, and and it's it's a it's a federal law, I assume, uh, but it's also 
it also serves the purpose of the relationship, it's, which means every single time I buckle the seatbelt, it, it, it enhances my unity with my wife. It is a, it's, a it, it's, it's, it's technically obedience. I'm obeying what I said I would do, but it, it, it brings us closer. So you, you can see one of the, one of the challenges that, that, um, that youth workers have is the demonic lie is that God is a spoil sport and, and he is keeping us away from things that are really good. That's, and, and that's, you know, Satan doesn't have to advertise that too much. It's, it's, you know, our hearts are already sort of prone to thinking those things. So the counter is no, that, that, no, obedience is the way he draws us to himself, just like of any other relationship. <laughs> or in every relationship, you, you speak well about the person. You, you're sexually faithful if you're married. And, and all relationships, they have different rules. You, you speak encouraging words. You ask forgiveness when you've sinned against the person. All those rules, they, they serve the purpose of friendship and intimacy. So um, I guess I'm identifying uh, one thing in particular, the, this relational center to Scripture, that God is calling his people closer to, exp- to be in his house. His thing is all about being with us and, and showing us his hospitality forever. Uh, but then out of that, I guess I'm speaking much more personally, where, where certainly my own sense as a, as a churched teenager uh, not, not not necessarily a believing teenager, but a church teenager, was that that God is just trying to keep me from having a good time, and and uh, so as a result, for me personally, I I um I you know you think other people are sort of like you, and so so sometimes when I when I'm, I'm thinking about that when I'm speaking to a teenager that that obedience can be hard, but it is really really good. It it turns us toward the life himself and it turns us away from things that are that are our vanity as ecclesiastes says and vanity are things that ultimately have an affinity to death so that that has been a, a truth that that obviously is sealed in the person of christ uh, he, it's in Christ that all boundaries between ourselves and, and, and the Lord have been abolished. He is the one who has, who has, who has, who has made the way for that. And the, the Spirit is the one who, in a sense, seals that, that unity and closeness with our God. But, but to see that that is, that is who he, you know, that's, that is the very inclination of God has been, it's been very encouraging for my own obedience. It's made, it's made a picture. Yeah, that, that's excellent. And like, like you said, <clears throat> there are so many that identify with that. I think we do view God as somebody who's upset with us oftentimes, or like you said, a killjoy that just has all these um, you know, rules we're supposed to abide by. Uh, but like you said, kind of the, the heart of Scripture is him wanting to dwell with his people and him saying, you know, I'm with you. And I think even in your book, Running Scared, it seems like you point that out of, um, one of the things God commands more than anything else in Scripture is do not fear. And you think that you think of that as as a commandment that He's telling us, commanding us, do not fear. I'm with you, and it's because He's with us and wants to be with mm-hmm. His people. Um, but that's a beautiful truth uh, that you're highlighting, and uh, thank you for that. Do you want to add anything else? No, I don't think so. It's um, no, no, I don't think so. It's a, uh, it's. Yeah, you know, it's just precious. I've, I've, I've so appreciated it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for sharing that with us. 